Cesar. I work for Red Hand Mobile. And well, I want to talk with you about a little project that I'm working on in my free time. Um, well, and first of all, there is a Elastic.ko talk. So if everybody is interested, they can use this email and, and go there. So, node.js.je .ee. Um, e -E. So, I'm working right now trying to put uh, Node.js as a app. Ah, you can, and this talk is a little bit technical, so if you feel uh, the need to, to discuss with me something or whatever, interrupt me, uh, or ask about something, I, I will be very happy because that's, that I want to feel that you really uh, or engage or, or whatever else. If you feel if you want to discuss something technical or some doubt or whatever, just interrupt me and I will answer any questions. So my work uh, is about trying to put job and no GS in the enterprise. So one of the good things about no GS, as everybody here knows, is is asynchronous. So it allows you to make Calls and you don't need to wait. Um, you don't need to block the main thread in that moment. And allow you as well is you got the BA compiler that is a very wonderful tool. And the BA if in the BA compiler, if you hit the sweet spot, you can get very good speed, and that's very nice for everybody. Everybody loves speed and. Another, another of the good thing that Node.js has is that it's high level as well. About asynchronous, I want to talk. Asynchronous, the magic behind asynchronous is doing thanks to this library, the lib UI, uh, the UV library, or the lib UV, like they, they call it. First of all, this library first was lib event. That was only for Linux. What is the advantage? The advantage is that you're making a system call with this library. So the system call is a kernel type of event inside the, inside the kernel stuff. And you can put for assign a some process, some event. So you can continue your work and you wait until this guy return from the whatever he's doing and finish and you can receive that callback. As you can see, this library here doesn't look so friendly. So if nobody wants to do a malloc there, that's crazy, that's old school. So if somebody offers you that library, you will say, you're crazy, don't show me that, please. I want to continue my Java or my old parallel language, whatever, my Ruby. If somebody sends send you this library and say, use it, because it is asynchronous, and you're going to use the system call, you can have, you have very, you're cl very close to the method. So you're going to be fast. Nobody's going to use that thing. So what they do? They put Node.js. They put a JavaScript virtual machine to pond that, that library. And they connect this, big, this beautiful library like a jet. Imagine this. This, UV, you, you, this UV library. Sorry for the pronunciation. Think about this like a U2 type of plane, a spy type of plane, a big plane. So if you go on board in C, what you're going to see inside the cabin is a bunch of, of buttons, things that doesn't make sense or whatever. If you put JavaScript, they give you an iPad and a button that says start. Boom. Everybody wants that kind of power in his hand. So that's why we like JavaScript so much. Sorry, okay. Basically. Node.js is a C++ wrapper with a V8 embedded inside that. C++, what it does is give, give JavaScript the capability that everybody loves, like connection to some socket, some native library from somewhere, some everything that JavaScript cannot do by itself is provided by C++ wrapper here. So this V8, if you download V8 right now, you don't even get a print. You don't give a console to learn nothing. You are just giving a basic JavaScript reader and executor. 
as you know, as you may know, or this compiler is very efficient. So you don't lose a lot of performance if you hit the sweet spot. If you start doing crazy things and trick the, the profiler inside that, you are you're going to have a lot of pain, of course. No. So what they do? They take the wrapper, they connect it to the EUV, and they get all the benefits of the low-level library that connect directly with the kernel stuff. So why Node.js is so what well, JavaScript itself is so cool. It is a good opportunity to us to work with that. Is that they are a competition now. It's Java a chakra core. Now we have two big companies that are big, have a lot of budget, they are fighting itself to make this thing the more efficient. So it's beneficial for us, JavaScript developers, because they're going to fight each other to, to who is the going to be the best of the best. So if this is the same concept, they put the checker core there, what they do was take all the interfaces of, of Node.js open source project and they, they just mimic with their, job, with their chakra core, the Node.js project, and they plug it, it works. So that's beneficial for us. So this is some benchmark. This is from the Microsoft blog, so don't take it too seriously. <laughs> because they put it like they win there. So do your own benchmark in your house and, and take. But that, that's the good thing. At the end, we are on, we are the only beneficial person, the only only people are going to get beneficial of this fight, because Microsoft and and Chrome they're going to fight together to try to best make the best. If a spider monkey that is the Firefox one want to want to join, beneficial for us, organic or benefits. And I put they put their apple to test this. Okay. Okay. Now. Let's talk about our witnesses. So, our witnesses is more in the part of enterprise. For example, somebody find easy to the, the, to generate a PDF from an HTML in JavaScript. Is it is for example, they, I was completely. I came from the Java world, so I used to make jokes of Node.js developers. So now I am part of the problem. Um, and when they try to make some Node.js, some my old stuff, like generate a PDF, encrypt a PDF, put an password in my PDF, that's impossible in JavaScript. I understand we are a immature community. We need some time to to the libraries come together. But in the Java world, all competition in the enterprise, uh, it sounds a little bit corporatic. But uh, I just want to say this point is that in Java world, they have this beautiful API. iText, for example, allows you to encrypt, to, re to read, to generate from HTML a PDF. PDF box, the same. Then you got report tools. From my understanding, if you don't generate a PDF in JavaScript, you cannot have a report tools. So, an enterprise love this thing, like making reports in SAP, SIP, or whatever. So this is thing I think is lacking in my job because first they, they, the client said, oh, the, this is beautiful, Node.js, oh my god, hipsters, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry. And, and then they say, I can generate a PDF here. And I had to say, no, man, you are crazy because libraries are not there yet. So, for example, ITEX can do even character, internationalization, a lot of things. Jasper Report can generate reports with a beautiful API that is like Crystal Report, but open source. Then you get search engines like Soul or Lucene. They say in their web page, like 5 gigabyte per second. I, well, I, I'm going to believe it. That's it. So, there are beautiful APIs that I want to be in my environment. But until, but until now, it was, it's, it's impossible for me. Uh, I get very frustrated. So, what do I do? Um, what I do was, I, try, I write a 
a library in C11, that what it does is it takes Java, Java native interface and make a wrapper in, with some trace sa threat safety, some ex exception handling, some protection from your functions. So you never invent it. You call a function in C without putting some allocated values, you're going to break that thing out. So I protect myself. I make a, li a, a library that allows you to do all that. You don't need even to care about it. I just mentioned, if you are interested in this part of the world, I use NAN, that is an a API in Node.js, that what it brings you is a common layer through all the Node.js versions. So you can, you know when you develop in, in native, you know that everything is fine with the next release of Node.js, don't going to broke. And C11, why not C98? Because C11 gives you a lot of beautiful abstractions that make the compiler make a lot of stuff for you. I don't want to mess with that. I, I like polymorphism as well. And a lot of very beautiful software design techniques I can implement in this thing. So if someday you have to go more deeper, um, I will put the GitHub and we can chat or whatever. It's, so, I don't know where is the... Okay, this is the third one. This is a bit, little bit of a mistake. I call this library El Ella because I am very bad with names. And that's it. This, this, this guy here, what he does is take JavaScript, Java, and communicate it with JavaScript. So, it's like talk to her or Almodovar. I put it like a bad name, sorry. We can change it later. So, this guy, what he does is he turns with the native Java and he transforms all the types to JavaScript compatible and JavaScript can talk with Java without problem. And the other thing that he does is the asynchronous power that I show you later, it gives that power to Java behind the scenes, making them feel like a Node.js process. They are in the same process. There is like with this plugin, you make Node.js have a Java inside and a V8 inside. So you have twice the power, and that's my, my, my goal in reality. That we use the power of the, of the evil, um, the power of our enemy in our favor. I don't want to rewrite that PDF thing, because they say in the Wikipedia, it's like 10 years, 10 man years of experience there. So. And PDF is not one of my fields of interest, so I don't want to rewrite that thing again. Oh, and this is the result. We have a GVM, C11, and V8. This is a beautiful relationship there. A lot of uh, good things. And I'm going too fast, so i sorry if... So I, think I make a demo for you. I hope you like it. I take a lot of, a lot of pain to make this, so I hope it's... Uh, hope you like it. Oh, there. <laughs> Sorry, I freed the little machine. <laughs> I, I, because I want to prove that this is going to work without any anything, without any external or whatever. I want to make sure that this thing is going to work in the most hostile environment. So what, that's why I make an a arch needle kind of... <laughs> Arch Linux distribution, I use it. It's just a file system. You throw a kernel there, you use group, you have your, you have your operating system. It is that thing. I hope this works, please. Okay. So you see, I am not making any kind of trick. I will show you there the consumption here. So you can, you can say, oh, Caesar, you don't eat too much or whatever. Now you have the proof there. It is too much, but, but maybe worth the pain. So, we are here. As you can see, no Java. There is no Java machine. There is no trick. How do I know where is, if there is trick? There is no Java home. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. No Java home, no nothing. You only got this thing. 36 megabytes, I am going to shame about that because 
it's impossible to get it more done than that. But please, um, is the system D making some something that is not there? It's not good for me. So JavaScript. We go to this plugin here. Um, first of all, you always start your node. You require the library with Java equal required like every everything uh, all you do there always. For now it's the boot, so sorry. This is the, the boot version, so it's not I, I put a lot of things in the new one. I'm going to show you the legacy because the new one doesn't get in time for this moment. So I sorry. Java. So we have Java here. It's not it's not started yet. We had a we have um, I, what I do is I load dynamically the library that you choose. There is, what is the trick, Caesar? Because I want to I want to everybody understand what happened. What is happening here is sorry. You can see there. Yeah. It's difficult, no? Sorry. One. There it was. What I'm doing, you see the GDK 0.1.7 there? I load dynamically the, 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 the dot .so library there. It's a native dynamic library, a shared library in Linux that, uh, that gives you an interface to communicate or create a JVM yourself. As you can see here in this part, I have an isolated JVM. So if you have a bigger JVM there, she doesn't care. She's acting with his own scope. You cannot do nothing there. So we got this Java, you know? Now we're going to start this thing. You're going to say, Caesar, why how do how do you going to do that? Because Java is not asynchronous. So I'm going to show you now the trick. So as everybody all Java developers know, you first put your class path, because that's the way they do that. So we go here, I have the class path thing here. Oy. So there is no trick. You put it inside quotes. As you can see, it's the relative directory where it is. In this side, you can see the JDK. I have some leads here because in the demo, I put some hearts there, like PDF box, iText, etc. And a big Java, and a Java class that I do for this test. As well, let me open Eclipse. You're very familiar with Eclipse here, and open and raise your hand with some Eclipse. Okay, so you know how heavy is this thing, so wait. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that in the equivalent in Java of that class that I want to call in this example. So you see that what you what you see is what you get. This thing. Well, for now. As you can see, I set the class path. That's done. I'm going to make a variable because the Java, the Java virtual machine. Um, the, I'm going to boot up the Java virtual machine. I'm going to get a pointer from that Java virtual machine to our virtual machine in V8. So I need to save it. Problem is, it's asynchronous. So I need to make this variable here. Start your beautiful function like always. Anonymous function. I want to put here this, and you're going to say JVM equal VM. Is that clear? Um, it's, you, know, you know what happened here, no? I click, it works at first, so we are on a good track. Now you get a new, a new object. This new object is the one that makes the magic happen in the, in the virtual machine. So, we are going to do is, I'm going to show you here. Can you see this? No. 
No, no. Oh my God. <coughs> Sorry, but imagine that there is an uh, object in hierarchy there. <laughs> and, the, and the name is P2H service. Again, back with the names. So, with going new, in the new version, you can do it with points, but uh, as I told you, I don't have that enough time. <coughs> so, you have to put this bar here. And then you're going to do is, you're going to say PDF, like a Java object, like JavaScript object. Boom. And it fades. <laughs> <laughs> Two more quotes. Oh my, I repeat this thing like eight times yesterday. and never fades. Clap the finishing final session. Another good feature of this thing is that it controls the exception for you. So as you can see, this exception don't crash the Node.js thing. So point for me, even when I lost. So, <laughs> so uh, it's a double quotes. Yeah? You've got single quotes, double quotes in your string that you're passing in. Yeah? Sorry, please. I think it's because you've got double quotes here, no? You've got single quote, double quote, single quote. Oh my god, thank you. No problem. This is easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not exciting. I'm exciting. I'm working. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it was that. Thank you. So, uh, this, sorry for this login thing that Java Builder card is because this was made so fast. I don't have the time to clean this thing. It's just uh, the viewing thing for me. Um, PDF. Boom! You got all the methods of your Java class there. You see the hierarchy here, and you see your JavaScript here. It's the same. And it, for you, it's transparent. You don't need to know the difference. For you, as a, a JavaScript developer, this is completely crystal. You don't know what happened. Uh, DevOps can configure the node in such a way that you think you're calling methods from JavaScript doing require and you are calling a Java B, JVM behind the scene. So what is the stuff? For example, we're going to try add. What they do is two methods. Boom! You got this called the JVM, send the two methods. He, he discovered that these two arguments are int, because as you know, JavaScript doesn't have types. So I had to do that in just in time, you know? JavaScript, take two ints, boom, you got it there. As I know you're going to do this, as I know that you're going to do something like this someday, this is the other stuff. This is libgn, uh, libgni working right now. It's wrapping, protecting you to crash the thing and telling you what are you missing. You're missing an integer here. So you say, oh my god, let's put it again. So, now the good thing is, I already tried with this guy here. I work with cons, it should work the same. But I will put it only because one thing. Sorry. Okay, Java, JVM, wow. is fine. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. We're making what is the financial phone or whatever. Um head. What if this does is going to make a slip in the thread? What are we going to test here? If we can handle other threads made made in the JVM inside, that's pro that's troubles troublesome because when you make a call, JVM is multi-thread, so it can spawn a lot of threads, but you're protected from there. And here's why. This, oh, okay, sorry, I have to put the time. You stop the thread. This is synchronous. This is bad for us because this. Is defeating the Node.js purposes. It should be, should be a synchronous. Yes, a synchronous. So, how do we make this thing asynchronous? So we put that function here. Say, um, console dot log. Sleep. Oh, come here. And then, how do I prove to you that this is synchronous? Well, I make another call here. If this is the demo got up with me today, this guy, the first one, should print first, and the second one should print. The first one here is one, 
the second one first and the, and the one as you can see, no? Asynchronous is not defeated. You can do whatever you want there. So I think that's the that's end this part here. Okay, as you can see, just to add a new uh, to make a, a method asynchronous, you just add a function there. So the BA is going to detect um my the area library going to detect that you put a function there and you want a callback. So it makes that call specifically asynchronous. So that don't if you don't put that call, it's going to block. So be careful. Use always the asynchronous tools that I put there. Sorry, uh, that function has your callback. Eh? The function. Uh -huh. uh, does it your callback? What function? The third parameter. Third. Coming back one. Ah, yeah, that function there. It's not that anonymous function. If you put it there. I, the API is going to understand that you want to do a synchronous thing. So that's the way you like say, hey, this thread, forget about this, continue read, the interpreter is going to continue reading your code and you get the synchronous beautifulness. Uh, we love oh no yes. So I think this over here. I think I can close this one. But Caesar, you're going to tell how do you scale this? This is beautiful because I just mine. You say, oh, this is only going to work with small samples. So I make a, a sample for you here. <coughs> We're going to prove that I just load some time. What I do is the same. I just the HTTPS. This is simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call Wikipedia to each article that is there. Um, I'm going to call it Wikipedia. I get the HTML. I'm going to do the impossible in JavaScript. That's a big word, sorry. But it's impossible until, until if you got this PDF box there. So as you can see, it's simple JavaScript. The only thing that is Java is this line here. Ah, and the instantiation here somewhere. I don't know. I think I put everything inside. Yes, instantiation in Java. The Java booting up the virtual machine. The first time you do, you're going to take a, lot, a bit of time because it's a monster. But the next call is faster. And what I do is I design this to you only make one. If you try again, you're going to receive the same preference. So you can play with this if you want to call the same guy using different asynchronous code. Uh, there's a lot of improvement and experimentation here, so I, I like it. Uh, and so we got this response that on the same when it ends downloading the page, you're going to transfer the HTML to PDF. Okay? I uh, hope this works. No. For now, I have to call it from here because my loading, dynamic loading library is, is bad. It's bad implemented. So you can see here, it's making calls to Wikipedia, set up CPU here, 95, it's one core only. So if you want, I use one core because I do the bad assumption that everybody told me that JavaScript was one core. Thing is that your JavaScript is one core, but the compiler, the guy that made the core faster is multi-core. It's multi so you're making a bad favor to you only assigning one core. So lesson learned here. This guy is making the calls and kept calling the JVM. As you can see, when everything finished, 79 megabytes. I hope that's not a pointer. Ah, no, this is the beam. Beam is consuming that, that thing. Oof. Sorry, I was, I was afraid of... Uh, um, yeah, it's because of this guy. <laughs> so, you see, now it's 37. Ha happy days. So, how do we get this? I have, I have fired Sila, but you have to trust me for now. It's here. Everything is downloaded, all in PDF. This is impossible. Well, uh, I try to do it, I, I can't. I have to make this. So, what is the next one? Okay, the next one is this. 
I don't, I'm going even further, a little bit further in this demo just to show you the power behind. What do, this demo I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to that directory, I'm going to read all the PDF, extract the text, and show it to you in some kind of, of, of search library. You can search inside all, all these PDF. Imagine that you had the, bet, the good case, imagine the government that had to have a big printer, so had a big printer, and they print all these um, physical papers, and they do it in a machine that does fast. So they do it in PDF. So if you don't have PDF library, you are done. They don't want you. So that's an opportunity for Node.js to be there. So this is going to do, you're going to search all the strings inside that, as you can see, it's doing it, there is no optimization, no nothing, so, so it's normal that I'm going to get more than 500 megabytes of RAM, the CPU is 100%, and he has finished. So, we're going to do this, locate 300, this is my beautiful web page. This is my skills in CSS. <laughs> Don't be so impressed. <laughs> so I will put a stellar micro something. Now, right now, it's making the call, but the server is making something behind the scene. It's just a surprise for you. But that thing is, is very, very heavy. I just wanted to push to the limit just to, to test if this thing is going to survive to a real environment. So it's doing all the thing, but as you can see, it's finding the word and taking a photo of that PDF. So with PDF box, you have the I, I put something back, sorry. Stella. So it finds your PDF, it finds that word inside your PDF. If you find it, it takes a, a photo of that PDF and sends it to you. So this is you can done that, you cannot do that with Doge.js alone. You need that beautiful library made by Apache. And well, and that's it. And I, I don't I can put this more bigger, but it is the photo, you know? And you can see it's catch now. Now you can see everything you want. Um for example. Yeah, you got the PDF, the data inside, and the photo. Um, I hope you like the presentation, that's everything I got. Thank you.